So dual tasking is absolutely inherent with mobility and ADLs. There's no way of getting around dual tasking. It is a predictor of how likely you are to be able to function without being able to concentrate. So if you can dual task and walk and keep your balance, your likelihood of falls goes way down because that means your attention is not devoted to your movements. Your attention can be allocated out to watching out for the world. You'll see that step. You'll see the threshold. You'll see the change in flooring. You'll see the dog coming. You'll see the grandchild approaching. So when you can dual task, your movement is much more um, solid, is held in a concentrated repository that you can rely on. So dual tasking forces the use, so it is a constraint induced. You're constraining the attention away by asking someone to pay attention to a distraction so that they have less attention to spend on their movement. That's good. We want to constrain the attention. So if you are dependent on attention and you can only walk well when you pay attention, that means your therapist did not complete your recovery because being dependent on attention is dangerous functioning like that out in the real world. You better not be a community ambulator or at a party or in a church gathering because if you're dependent on attention, as soon as your attention goes up to greet Madge, who you've seen at church, that means something that your attention was relying on, your placement of your right lower extremity to be accurate in walking was borrowed from. So the acts of walking, swallowing, and dressing were all procedural pre-stroke. How do we make them again procedural post-stroke? By using dual tasking. And remember, those are not the only three tasks that were procedural pre-stroke. We only can compel something to become automatized again if we use the supply and demand, which means demands that are structured in tasks create the supply, the stimulus of neuroplasticity so that an individual is forced to be able to move without having to concentrate or without the ability to fully concentrate. So tasks only become procedural again, automatized again, when we force them to be. If we never dual task with our persons recovering from stroke, they are not going to be able to dual task and divide attention out in the real world. So allowing people to focus on heel strike, heel strike, heel strike, don't let your knee buckle, keep your body upright, don't let your pelvis retract. That's fine very early on in recovery. You can give some intrinsic body part specific feedback. But the more you do that as rehabilitation goes on, the more the individual is then compelled to be dependent on their attention on their body.